Angelica's first love came back. Not only did she let him move into our home, but she also gave him my pajamas. As she gently dried his hair with a blow dryer, I suddenly realized that she wasn't cold and distant with everyone. Chapter 1 I was supposed to be on a business trip out of town. Knowing that Angelica had a social engagement tonight, I returned home early. Without telling her, Angelica has a bad stomach, an ulcer, which has been particularly painful lately. If she couldn't get out of the engagement, I figured I could at least come home and make her some herbal medicine. What I didn't expect was to surprise myself instead of her. I unlocked the door, and the lights inside were already on. Angelica was home, but when I called out, there was no response. All I could hear was the sound of a blow dryer coming from the bathroom. I followed the sound, and the scene before me froze me in place. Angelica wasn't alone. There was a man with her, a stranger. The clothes he was wearing looked familiar, they were the ones Angelica had given me not long ago. At the time, I had told her the outfit didn't suit me. She hadn't been happy about that. She said, wear it or don't. I don't care. How could I not wear it? I always accepted her gifts without question. But now, seeing those clothes on someone else, I realized they fit him much better than they ever fit me. That thought alone made my fists clench at my sides. The man was facing Angelica. His hair slightly damp. Angelica was on her tiptoes, holding the blow dryer, and softly said to him, lower your head a little. She complained. Why are you so tall? The man chuckled softly but obediently bent down, bringing his head closer to her. Through the mirror, I saw a faint smile on Angelica's face. Her lips curled up. Her eyes were gentle. Yes, gentle. I had never seen gentleness like this from Angelica. It stung. Angelica and I had been together for five years. From the time we met until now. Married. She was always cold, distant with others, and indifferent with me. Nothing seemed to stir any strong emotion in her. She smiled. Yes but the smile never reached her eyes. I didn't mind much. Everyone has their own personality. Since I chose her, I had to accept both her strengths and her flaws. At least, I had always thought I was different from the others to her. But now, it seemed I was just like everyone else, leaning against the doorframe. My mind was in a whirl, but I quickly forced myself to calm down. I knocked on the open door. Excuse me, you two. The intimate atmosphere between them shattered instantly, and they finally noticed my presence. The men froze for a moment then lifted his head to look at me, his expression shifting from confusion to understanding. He raised an eyebrow and smiled at me, with a hint of provocation. Angelica, on the other hand, was startled by my sudden voice. She nearly stumbled but was caught by the men as she let out a small yelp. I had just stretched out my hand to help her, but it froze in the air. Angelica frowned at me. Why are you home early? I withdrew my hand and crossed my arms. What's the matter? Did I interrupt something? Have you two already slept together? Or were you just about to? Angelica's face darkened immediately. Albert, what nonsense are you talking about? I slammed my suitcase down with a loud thud. Why don't you take a look at what you're doing? Alone, with a man, playing some game in the bathroom. How romantic. Albert, Angelica was clearly furious, glaring at me with rage. The man, who had been watching the scene unfold with a cold detachment, stepped forward, shielding Angelica behind him. Mr. Lin, right. You've misunderstood. Angelica and I aren't involved in the way you think. We're just friends. The way you're talking about your wife. Don't you think it's a bit inappropriate? His tone was accusatory, as if I was the one insulting them. I laughed dryly. If you're going to say such shameless things, shouldn't you at least let go of my wife's hand first? Is it soft? Does it feel nice? Are you enjoying yourself? The man's expression changed. Mr. Lin, if you have an issue with me, just say it. There's no need to talk about Angelica like that. I sneered. What kind of talk? Crude or vulgar, you two aren't saying anything, but you're sure doing plenty. You, the men, clearly enraged, stepped forward, but Angelica pulled him back. Both of you, shut up, the men wasn't satisfied. Angelica, am I just supposed to let him slander us like this? I scoffed, or what? Should she yell at me or hit me? That'll clear things up for sure, especially since we're still married. Or maybe you two can be brave enough to tell me your true loves. I'm such a kind person, I'd be happy to step aside for true love. Shut up. Angelica grabbed my hand and started pulling me out of the room. We need to talk. I didn't resist. I just turned back and smiled at the men. Make yourself at home. The men. Chapter 2. Angelica dragged me into the bedroom. She slammed the door behind her. For the first time, the always calm and composed Angelica seemed to be losing control. I glanced at the bed. It was perfectly made. Not a single crease in sight. I clicked my tongue in mock regret. Looks like you didn't have time to sleep together yet. I came back too early. Huh. Albert. Shut up. Angelica's eyes were blazing. Do you have to say such nasty things? You weren't like this before. I laughed softly. What do you think I should be like? Silently accepting being cheated on. You're wrong if you think that. I was raised in the streets. This is the real me. Surprised. Angelica took a deep breath. 
Albert, I don't want to argue with you. Let's talk about this later. He's an old college friend who just came back from abroad and doesn't have a place to stay. I let him stay the night here. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. I looked at her. That's what you brought me in here to say. Angelica's silence was all the answer I needed. To say I wasn't disappointed would be a lie. I had followed her in here because I still had some hope. I was hoping that she would give me a reasonable explanation. Even in the face of my sharp accusations. But clearly, I was being naive. Got it. So he's staying here. No problem. Do whatever you want. I turned to leave as soon as I finished speaking. Angelica grabbed my arm. Where are you going? I stared at her in disbelief. A threesome. I'm not into that. Her grip on my arm tightened. Her nails digging into my skin. It hurt like hell. Albert. What's gotten into you? I pried her hand off. What's gotten into me? What's gotten into you? Do you even know what you're doing? Angelica. Stop making me sick. I opened the door and walked out. The man had already changed out of my pajamas and was now dressed in a suit, looking all polished and composed. He forced a weak smile at Angelica, the cracks in his facade showing. Angelica, I think I should leave. I don't want to cause more trouble. Then he turned to me. Mr. Lin, you've really misunderstood. These are your pajamas, right? I'll return them. He handed the pajamas back to me. As he let go, I stepped back, letting them fall to the floor. Trash belongs in the trash can. Why would you give it to me? Angelica's head snapped up her expression shifting wildly. Suddenly, she spoke. You don't need to leave. Stay here. The man's eyes lit up, but he still hesitated. That wouldn't be right, would it? You and Mr. Lin. Angelica interrupted him. Don't worry about it. I said stay. So stay. Or do you want to go to a hotel? Can you tolerate it? The men sighed. You always know me best. Their casual exchange made me nauseous. I didn't want to say another word. I picked up my suitcase and stormed out. Chapter 3. I hurried down the stairs. The cool breeze hit me and I couldn't help but shiver. Then the nausea hit me like a wave, bent over. I dry heaved repeatedly. Sad. Hurt. Angry. Betrayed. I couldn't untangle my emotions. I only knew that I was exhausted. Mentally and physically, the calm facade I had kept up was crumbling. This was ridiculous. I never thought cheating would happen with Angelica. People always said, when a man gets rich, he changes. Women are the same, especially in relationships like yours, where the woman is stronger than the man. You need to keep an eye on her. I never cared about those comments. I didn't mind that Angelica was more successful than me. It was just a fact. But I trusted her. I believed that even if something happened between us, even if things fell apart, we would part ways peacefully. It wasn't about love. It was about her character. But reality had slapped me in the face. Angelica, what are you doing? And who exactly is that man? With these questions in mind, I headed back to the old house. I remembered there was an old photo album in the storage room. A birthday gift Angelica had received during her university days. It was full of photos of her. Some were solo shots. Others were with different people. It was an incredibly thoughtful gift. I had asked her who gave it to her. She had said, a college friend. Did they like you? After all, it's hard to believe someone would put in so much effort for just a friend. Angelica hadn't denied it. She simply said, yes, because she had been so honest. I didn't push further. After all, it's not the past that hurts people. It's their attitude in the present. The old house wasn't far, just a 20-minute drive away, compared to the new house. I liked this one better. Angelica and I had lived here for two and a half years before we moved out after getting married. Sometimes, when I wasn't feeling great, I would come back here to clear my head. It was my sanctuary, but this was the first time I entered the house with such a foul mood. I quickly found the photo album in the storage room. The Angelica in those photos was so young, she rarely smiled, but there was an undeniable vitality in her features. Many of the photos looked like they were taken secretly, showing her profile. Among the few front-facing photos, she wore a graduation cap and gown. It was her graduation photo. She had taken pictures with various people, some girls, some guys. I went through each one carefully. Then, I froze. This photo was different from the rest. In it, two people were standing very close, their arms practically glued together. The guy was grinning widely, his body leaning slightly toward Angelica. She wasn't smiling but her hand had crumpled the sleeve of her gown. Though his appearance had changed a bit, I recognized him immediately. It was him. On the back of the photo were two names, Angelica and Raphael, and in between those names, a small heart was drawn. Chapter 4. I was woken up by the noise of renovations upstairs. I hadn't slept well that night, drifting in and out of a restless sleep. When I finally opened my eyes, my head was still foggy. It took me a while to realize I was at the old house. It was too late to do anything last night so I had just crashed on the couch for the night. Not far from me sat a person, staring at me in a way that was impossible to ignore. It was Angelica. I wasn't surprised she was here. I remembered once, after a fight, 
I stormed off within an hour. She had found me at the old house. I had asked her, how did you know I'd be here? Angelica had said, where else would you go? She knew I had nowhere else to go because I was an orphan. It was Angelica who had given me a home. Someone once asked her why she didn't sell this old house. She said, let's keep it. When someone's upset, they'll have a place to hide. My feelings for Angelica were complicated. There was love and gratitude. I thought we could live out our days together in quiet contentment. Sighing, I got up and went to the bathroom to freshen up. Angelica had bought breakfast, and I didn't bother to be polite. I ate without hesitation. After finishing, I asked her, his name is Raphael, he's your ex. The photo album was sitting right there. We weren't idiots. Angelica replied, yes. I looked up at her, Angelica, what are you doing? Bringing your ex into our home, letting him wear my pajamas, drying his hair. Are you trying to reenact some long lost love story with me as a spectator? Believe it or not, nothing is going on between us. I shook my head. I don't believe you. Angelica's face grew tense as she stared at me. After a long pause, she rubbed her forehead and placed two receipts on the table in front of me. He slept at the house last night. I stayed at a hotel. These are the receipts. If you want, I can get security footage. Nothing happened between us. That's the truth. I didn't bother to look at the papers. If Angelica dared to put them in front of me, they had to be real. But still, he stayed at the house. And you went to a hotel. Angelica. I don't understand your logic anymore. Angelica said. He's a light sleeper and he has a cleanliness obsession. He can't stay at hotels. Did he tell you that? Or are you just incredibly understanding? Angelica glared at me. Albert, speak properly and stop being sarcastic. I had reached my breaking point. I would love to speak properly. But have you spoken to me properly? Light sleeper. Clean freak. Can't stay at a hotel. What? Is he royalty? Every time I go on a business trip, I stay at hotels. Did you ever care? Is Raphael somehow more important than everyone else? More important than me? Angelica reacted like I had struck a nerve, standing up abruptly. I already stayed somewhere else. I've already told you nothing happened. What more do you want? Every accusation was like a thunderclap in my mind, leaving me dizzy, gripping the table. I steadied my voice as best as I could. Divorce. I want a divorce. Angelica's expression changed instantly. Shut up, Albert. Take that word back. She nearly growled through gritted teeth. I locked eyes with her. Angelica closed her eyes and clenched her fists. When she reopened them, the raw emotion was gone divorce, that's not happening. Chapter 5. Angelica and I fell into a cold war. I stayed at the old house. I didn't go looking for her. And she didn't come looking for me either. I had no idea what was going through her mind. I was just waiting for myself to calm down enough to handle this situation efficiently. One day, her assistant called me. Senior, did you and Miss Moo have a fight? The girl was a junior of mine and quite capable. When she had trouble finding a job, I had recommended her to Angelica. She had worked under Angelica for years and done well. She was grateful to me and had kept in touch, but this was the first time she had brought up Angelica. What's going on? I asked. After hesitating for a few seconds, she said, Miss Moo had a business dinner tonight and drank a lot. I was going to call you, but then a strange man came and picked her up. He was driving her car. I was silent for a few seconds before sending her a picture of Raphael. Was it him? Yes. Her voice sounded worried. Senior, are you okay? I chuckled. I'm fine better than fine. Looks like it's time to move the divorce process forward. The longer I dragged this out, the more foolish I looked. I'm a man of action. The next morning, I went to a lawyer and had a divorce agreement drafted. Angelica and I had kept our finances separate, so the agreement was just a formality. When she saw me at the office later that day, she hesitated for a second but quickly returned to her usual indifferent expression. She said, this is the office. If you have something to say, let's talk at home. Home, of course, but not now. I placed the divorce agreement in front of her. Sign it. We can head to the civil affairs office now while it's still early. Angelica stared at the document for a long time. Is this why you came to see me? The answer was obvious, so I didn't bother responding. Angelica, however, tore the divorce papers in half. Didn't I already tell you? Divorce is not happening. I acted as if I hadn't heard her and pulled out another copy. She tore it up again. I pulled out another. She tore it up again. This went on until the twelfth copy. Angelica's face was dark with anger. Albert, are you sure about this? I scoffed. If I weren't sure, would I be here playing this game? She slammed the latest copy of the divorce papers onto the table and signed her name with a flourish. Fine, let's go to the civil affairs office. Angelica and I each drove our own cars to the civil affairs office. We were lucky, there weren't many people, and we didn't have to wait long for our turn. The clerk asked, are you both sure about this? I nodded. Yes, we're sure. Angelica's gaze lingered on me. And you, are you sure? When I looked at her, she quickly averted her eyes. Her voice was icy when she answered. Yes, 
I'm sure. All right. The clerk said. I'll start the process. You'll need to come back in a month to collect your divorce certificate. As I watched the clerk typing away, I finally exhaled a breath I didn't realize I was holding. But then Angelica spoke up. Wait, what now? Angelica looked at me. Albert, are you really sure you want this divorce? Yes, I'm sure. Angelica shot to her feet. The chair she'd been sitting in crashing to the floor with a loud bang. Albert, you are unbelievable. With that, she stormed out without looking back. What just happened? The clerk asked. I was just as shocked and hurried after her. Angelica, stop. Angelica, she acted like she couldn't hear me. Her pace unrelenting. I jogged up to her and grabbed her arm. What the hell is this supposed to mean? Angelica spun around, slapping me across the face. I was stunned. She said, Albert, I'll say this one last time. I will not divorce you. Rage flared inside me. What do you mean you won't divorce? Are you playing games with me? Angelica took a deep breath. Albert, how long are you going to keep this up? Just because of some baseless accusations. You stormed out, demanded a divorce, does this amuse you? You're a grown man, and this is how you act. Do you know how exhausting this is for me? I stared at her calmly. I'm not playing games. Angelica, I really want a divorce. Why? Angelica looked at me with complete bewilderment. Is it because of Raphael? I told you. There's nothing between us. Nothing at all. Why won't you believe me? How can I believe you? I asked. Tell me. Where is Raphael living right now? Did you set it up for him? Does he not have a car? So you gave him one. Why did he pick you up after you got drunk? After he picked you up? Where did you go? What happened? I shook my head. A bitter laugh escaping my lips. But really. None of that matters. Let's focus on that night. If I hadn't come home. What would have happened? Nothing. Nothing would have happened. Angelica's frustration grew. I had already booked a hotel. If you don't believe me. You can check. I don't believe you. It was the second time I said it. Angelica. I don't believe you. No matter what you say. No matter what evidence you provide. I don't believe you anymore. I don't even care what you did or didn't do. I just don't trust you. That's it. I've always been good at cutting things off when necessary. Which is why I've managed to get this far in life. Chapter 6. Life has been unkind to me. So I've learned to protect myself. I won't let anything drag me down. Because no one has ever pulled me forward. I'm an orphan. But before I was born. I was called an unborn child. My biological mother only found out she was pregnant after my father died in a car accident. She didn't want to keep me. And I don't blame her. It was my grandparents who begged her. Just give birth to the child. And we'll raise him. They said. They gave my mother my father's inheritance and the compensation from the accident. Essentially. They bought me with that money. So. She gave birth to me. After her confinement period. She took the money and left. It was my grandparents who raised me. As for my mother. I have no feelings for her. No love. No hate. No longing. Those emotions would only bring me pain. So. I let go of her. Later. My grandparents passed away one after the other. At that time. I was in middle school. Just a kid. Completely orphaned. I felt sadness. Despair. And longing. But I spent a month processing all those emotions. And then I moved on with my life. Afterward. Someone offered to buy my grandparents' old house for a hundred thousand yuan. I agreed. Everyone said I was foolish. That it was a terrible deal and they were taking advantage of the fact that I had no family. But precisely because of that. I knew I couldn't hold onto the house. If I couldn't keep it. I had to let it go. Besides. I needed money. I needed to study. I needed to live. So I sold the house and left the place where I had grown up. And now. It's Angelica. She didn't explain herself to me immediately. And now. No matter what she says. I won't believe her. I don't want to become paranoid. I refuse to let myself be consumed by this. Let's divorce before things get uglier. Impossible. The more resolute I was about the divorce, the more determined Angelica was to not divorce. I couldn't understand her anymore. When negotiations failed, I decided to file for divorce. But what I didn't expect was that the day after I filed, Angelica retaliated by financially sanctioning me. She threatened to terminate all contracts with my company. Chapter 7. Angelica and I met because of the company. Back then, I had just graduated from university and started a business with some of my classmates. We were full of enthusiasm thinking we could conquer anything. But reality turned out to be much harsher than we expected. We had no funding. No connections. No one wanted to invest in us. No one even gave us a chance to pitch our ideas. There were too many people like us, full of passion, trying to start something. We were on the verge of giving up, ready to go our separate ways and find regular jobs. When a company approached us, they said they were interested in talking with us. It felt like we had grabbed onto a lifeline. Who knew that lifeline would turn out to be nothing but a straw? The person in charge said to me, sleep with me for a year, and I'll give you whatever you want. I refused without even thinking, but they wouldn't let me off so easily. In the chaos that followed, I smashed a bottle over his head. I was arrested. 
the men swore he would put me away for good. At that point, I had already prepared myself for the worst. But then Angelica appeared. She was like a savior. She easily smoothed things over, bailed me out, and even sent someone to negotiate a deal with our company. At first, I thought she, too, wanted to play the same games as the rich. So I started unbuttoning my shirt one by one, smirking at her, shall we get straight to it? Want me to take a shower first? But Angelica calmly buttoned each button back up. No need for that. I asked her, why are you helping me? She said, let's just say I pity you. I accepted her pity with gratitude. There was nothing to be offended about. After all, I really was pitiful. With Angelica's help, our company finally took off. But now, she's using that very thing to hold me hostage. I have to admit, she has me by the throat. When I went to her office, I asked her, what do you want? Angelica looked up at me. Withdraw the divorce filing. We stared each other down. Her calm demeanor made her position clear. I chuckled. Is that all? Fine. I'll withdraw it right away. Anything else? My quick response didn't seem to satisfy her. Her brows furrowed tightly. After a long pause, she asked, When are you moving back? Is that another condition? Angelica's lips pressed into a thin line. I got the message. Today. I'll move back today. Satisfied. Angelica threw the pen she was holding onto the table. Get out. At your service. The smile I had maintained vanished the moment I got into the car. I hate being controlled like this. No one can do that to me, not even Angelica. I made a call. Everyone at the company, wait for me. We're having a meeting. The meeting lasted well into the early hours of the morning, but it didn't yield the results I wanted. My idea was to find a new partner. The market is vast. Angelica isn't the only option. She could terminate the contract at any time, and we could find someone else at any time. But my team disagreed. They had grown too comfortable and didn't want change. Angelica's terms were too favorable. Ending the partnership with Angelica would be a loss, no matter how we went about it. Their thinking was, as long as Angelica is willing to work with us, she should be our first choice. I scoffed at their logic. This is what they call irreconcilable differences. It was clear to me that it was time to leave, but I'd need more time before I could make my exit, time to ensure I could walk away with enough money. So, I moved back. When I got home, Angelica was still awake. She was sitting in the living room with her laptop. When she saw me, she took off her glasses. Let's talk. I declined. I'm tired. Another time. Angelica's face darkened. I pretended not to notice and went straight to the guest room. I didn't know which room Raphael had slept in that night. I didn't know what he had touched or used. But everything in this house made me uncomfortable. In the end, I grabbed a sheet and made do on the couch. When I woke up the next morning, I found a blanket covering me. My mood immediately soured. And I angrily threw it onto the floor. Angelica was in the kitchen. Frying eggs. I snapped at her. Who told you to cover me with a blanket? Angelica paused, taking a deep breath. I changed all the sheets and covers. They're clean. I clenched my teeth. It doesn't matter. The very air in this house makes me sick. Albert. Angelica scolded. Her voice low and angry. You're going too far. He only stayed one night. And nothing happened. What are you trying to pull? I laughed coldly. Looking at her. Too far. Let me bring some woman home. Dress her in your pajamas. And blow dry her hair. Then maybe you'll understand how it feels. Don't you dare. Angelica's eyes blazed with fury. I shook my head calmly. Not that I dare. But I wouldn't. Because I have principles. I wouldn't stoop to something so disgusting. Chapter 8. Angelica and I parted on bad terms. She angrily dumped the breakfast into the trash and stormed off to her room. I didn't hold back either. Slamming the door behind me with a loud bang. Once again. We were back in a cold war. I kept busy. Leaving early and returning late. Angelica was busy too. For several days. We didn't even cross paths. During this time. I met with a few people and discussed some business, specifically, selling my shares in the company. Ideally, I'd sell them to my current partners, but their stance was too clear, they weren't on my side. To maximize my benefit, I had to look elsewhere. The only concession I made was to split the shares among several buyers, at least this way. None of them would have any decision-making power in the company. What happened after that was up to them. The negotiations went smoothly. As the money started to roll in, I officially exited the company. My former partners were furious, storming over to confront me. Their faces were red with anger, ready for a full-blown confrontation. It wasn't a pretty sight. I gave you a choice, and you didn't take it. Honestly, this outcome isn't so bad. When Angelica and I eventually have our fallout, at least you won't get caught in the crossfire. And let's not pretend, kicking me out of the company wasn't something you hadn't considered. They avoided my gaze. You're talking nonsense. We never had any such plans. I was indifferent. That's because you're afraid of Angelica. Otherwise. Once the rabbit is gone, who remembers the hunting dog? With the company situation resolved, it was time to deal with Angelica. But to my surprise, Raphael came to me before I could get to her. 
He said he wanted to talk. I agreed. As soon as we sat down, he started demanding, Why haven't you divorced her yet? Albert, do you have no pride? A grown man being supported by a woman. How long are you going to cling to Angelica? His words made me laugh. And who are you to say such things? Her lover, the side guy, or her pet. Has Angelica even acknowledged you? She's been telling me all along that there's nothing between the two of you. Do you get it? You're not even qualified to be a side piece. I looked him up and down. And it's not me who's refusing the divorce. It's Angelica. Is that the best you can do? Raphael's face flushed with anger. You're lying. Angelica wants to divorce you. She doesn't even like you. If it weren't for. He suddenly stopped. I stared at him. Puzzled. If it weren't for what? What were you about to say? A twisted smile spread across Raphael's face. Aren't you curious? You and Angelica come from completely different worlds. Why did she suddenly appear in your life? Why did she help you out of nowhere? You don't think that was all just a coincidence, do you? You're too naive. Albert. I asked him. What are you trying to say? Raphael raised an eyebrow. Want to know? Beg me for the answer. I looked at him calmly. Then scoffed. Then keep it to yourself. Don't bother telling me. I stood up to leave. Raphael panicked. Albert. Stop. I kept walking. Albert. I pushed open the door. Ready to walk out. Wait. Raphael's voice rose. Come back. I have something to show you. I smirked and casually sat back down. Raphael's cocky attitude was gone. Good. Now we were having a proper conversation. With a grim expression, Raphael pulled out a photograph and slid it across the table. This is Angelica and her adoptive mother. I glanced at it. Indifferent. In the photo, Angelica looked about five or six. Small and thin. If Raphael hadn't said it was her, I wouldn't have recognized her. Just as I was wondering why he was showing me this picture, I froze when I recognized the woman standing beside young Angelica. A long-buried memory resurfaced. I had seen this woman before, back home. In my grandmother's wardrobe, beneath piles of clothes, there was an old, dark red book, a marriage certificate. When you opened it, there was a photo. In that photo were two people. One was my father, who had died young. The other was my mother, who had run away. Chapter 9 I didn't know much about Angelica's family. All I knew was that both her parents were dead, and she had Northwest siblings or close relatives, like me. She was an orphan. The only difference was that she had money, while I had nothing. Angelica visited her parents' graves periodically. I once suggested going with her, but she refused. She said, no need. That no need also killed my plan of taking her to visit my grandparents' graves. Sometimes, I wondered if our relationship was normal. I had no answer. I had no experience with relationships, and there were no elders to guide me. In the end, I just told myself, this is good enough. I carried that attitude into five years of marriage with Angelica. But now, Raphael had told me those five years were a joke. Raphael said that Angelica was a true orphan, raised in an orphanage, but she had been lucky. At six years old, she was adopted by a wealthy couple. The couple had no children of their own and treated Angelica as their own, especially her adoptive mother, who doted on her as if she were her biological child. Her adoptive father passed away when she was 12. And six years ago, her adoptive mother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She fought for six months before passing away. Before Angelica's adoptive mother died, she told her that she had a son. She regretted abandoning him and hoped Angelica could find him and take care of him. Guess who that son is? Raphael looked at me with a twisted smile on his face. At the time, Angelica and I were still in love. But suddenly, she broke up with me, saying she had to fulfill her mother's dying wish. But why? She was my girlfriend. How could she just end things like that? What about me? Albert, you're so lucky. Your mother never stopped thinking about you. Even on her deathbed, she made Angelica your guardian. But what about me? Why did your family's business have to sacrifice our love? I took the photo from Raphael. Before I left, he called after me. Albert, you're really going to divorce Angelica? Right, I will, I said. But are you sure you want to take back someone who tossed you aside so easily? Chapter 10. Angelica, we need to talk. I arranged to meet Angelica at home. She arrived half an hour late, looking exhausted as she slumped onto the sofa. What do you want to talk about? Where to even start? Forget it, let's get straight to the point. I placed the photo in front of her. So, your adoptive mother was my biological mother. The hand she was using to rub her temples froze. Who gave you this? I shook my head. That doesn't matter. Let's talk about something that does. Raphael. Angelica sighed as she collapsed deeper into the couch. I should have known. He's the only one who's seen that photo. So, is there anything you want to say? Silence. A long, oppressive silence. Just as I thought Angelica would never break it. She finally spoke. From her. I heard the full story. My adoptive mother was a remarkable woman. She built her own cosmetics brand from scratch. Later, she met my adoptive father, and they built a life together. He couldn't have children, 
So my mother suggested they adopt. That's how I came into their lives. Angelica continued. The greatest fortune of my life was being their child. But that happiness didn't last. My father passed away. And then my mother got cancer. She glanced at me. It wasn't until then that I learned about you. Albert. You have to understand. She never forgot you. She always carried the weight of abandoning you. The reason she treated me so well was to make up for what she couldn't give you. She transferred all the love and guilt she had for you onto me. She loved you. Albert. Her dying wish was for you to be well. For you to forgive her. I'm sorry for keeping this from you for so long. As Angelica spoke. I waited for a wave of emotions to hit me. For anger. Grief. Something to rise to the surface. But nothing came. Just calm. A strange and unprecedented calm. Condolences. I said simply. Angelica looked at me in shock. That's all you have to say. I thought about it for a moment. Well, since we share a mother, let's end things amicably. Let's finalize the divorce quickly. Albert. Angelica called my name, but nothing else came out. After a long pause, she said, are you still holding a grudge against her? She's gone. Albert. Can't you just forgive her out of respect for the dead? I exhaled slowly. A grudge? Hardly, if anything. I just find it distasteful. Albert. Shut up. Angelica snapped. I chuckled, fine, what do you want to hear, that I've forgiven her, that I love her, that she was the best mother in the world, and I'll cherish her memory forever, will that satisfy you, if you need me to, I can even go to her grave and say it aloud, now, can we get back to talking about the divorce, Albert, I know my own name, no need to keep repeating it, Angelica, trying to contain her frustration, said, I understand you need time to process all of this, we don't have to rush, when you've had time to think, we can talk again, I waved her off. No need to wait. Let's talk now. Tell me your conditions. What do you want? I'll even go to your adoptive mother's grave every year if you like. Just divorce me. Please. Every second spent talking to Angelica. Every word exchanged. Made me feel sick to my stomach. It was like discovering a fly in a sandwich. And not just any fly. Half of one. Albert. I will not divorce you. I promised my mother I would take care of you. Great. Now I had swallowed the other half of the fly. Angelica. I don't want to disrespect the dead but you're forcing me here. Angelica frowned, clearly displeased. You said your mother was amazing, building her own brand from the ground up. But do you know where her money came from? Angelica didn't know, but I did. It was my father's blood money. Do you know how ruthless she was? She took all of my father's accident compensation, all of his earnings. She left nothing behind. When she left, she pretended to take me for a walk so my grandparents wouldn't stop her. Then she abandoned me. She left me behind a barn in the middle of winter, and I almost froze to death. That's impossible. Angelica denied instinctively. I continued. I don't hate her. It would take too much energy. To me. She's just an irrelevant stranger. But you keep insisting that she loved me. That she cared for me. That she was sorry for me. Where was she when I was digging in the dirt with my grandparents? Trying to scrape together enough to survive? Where was she when? After my grandparents died. People threatened to sell me if I didn't sell the house. Where was she when I was being bullied? Nearly driven to take a knife and end it all with someone. In my second year of college. When my money was stolen, all my tuition and living expenses gone, leaving me on the brink of jumping off the roof, where was she? Why bother? Without feelings. She's just a stranger, with feelings. She deserves to rot in hell. My words drained the color from Angelica's face. I didn't know. We didn't know. Mother wanted to make it right. Albert. She just didn't know how to face you. I let out a bitter laugh. How noble of her. Living in comfort and luxury while I was just a grain of sand grinding her heart. I'm so sorry for existing. That's not what I meant. Angelica tried to explain, but it was obvious that explaining wasn't her strength. The surge of emotions was making me dizzy. I rubbed my temples to ease the tension. You people are something else. You feel guilty toward me, so you compensate through her. Am I dead? Shouldn't the compensation come to me? She was dying of cancer, afraid to go with regrets. So she dumped the responsibility on you, so she could leave in peace. And you, out of duty or debt, married me to fulfill her wish. What a joke. I looked at Angelica, curious. Why did you think the best way to make it up to me was to marry me? Did you think I couldn't find a wife on my own? You should have just given me more money. Seriously. Angelica. Let's get divorced. I'm her biological son. There's a record of my birth and a birth certificate. It would be easy to prove I'm her son. If you don't agree to the divorce, I'll take you to court and fight for my inheritance. Chapter 11. That day, I rambled on and on. Aside from a few words at the beginning, Angelica remained quiet, listening intently. We both knew that there was no chance for us anymore. Divorce was inevitable. I waited three days, and Angelica finally agreed. This time, she drafted the divorce agreement. She gave me more than half of her assets, company shares, and other things. I didn't bother to look closely. I didn't care about those things. My therapist once told me that my biggest problem is my lack of desire. I have no desire for anything, not even money. 
It's easy to understand, given that no one stands behind me or ahead of me. He asked me, what do you want most? You need to find something you really want. Otherwise, I would lose even my desire to live. I thought about it for a long time and finally told him, I want someone to love me. I worked hard, lived hard, and tried to make myself a better person so that someone would love me. But Angelica destroyed all of that. She ruined five years of my life. I hated her, but I couldn't despise her. I couldn't let her leave such a deep mark on me. I had to remind myself that, at least once, she had helped me, regardless of her motives. She had saved me from a difficult situation. What I needed to do was let go of her. Detach and move on, that's what my therapist told me. You need to decisively leave behind the things that drag you down. And move forward without hesitation. The people who love you are ahead. Angelica and I registered our divorce at the civil affairs office. And a month later, we received our divorce certificates. I decided to leave the city. Raphael left too. He said, what a waste. All these years, I couldn't let go of her. And in the end, she wasn't worth it. Tell me, Albert, did I spend all these years feeding a dog? Oh, and I'm sorry for interfering in your lives, my bad. I didn't forgive him, but I didn't hate him either. He was just another passerby in this garbage period of my life. Someone who tripped me up and left me covered in dust. I brushed off the dirt, stood up, and kept moving forward. I didn't look back. A true hero never looks back. Pride. Chapter 12. It wasn't until Albert left the city that Angelica began to truly understand him. To her, Albert had always been someone she was supposed to repay. Marrying him. Giving him resources. Giving him money. She thought that was enough. Albert was nothing more than a vague symbol to her. Thinner than paper. She didn't see Albert making her herbal medicine. She didn't see Albert trying to make her laugh. She didn't see Albert's hopes. And she didn't see his disappointments. Having Albert spend five years with her in blindness, it was truly unfortunate. It wasn't until three months after Albert left that Angelica learned he had been seeing a therapist the entire time. The therapist refused to disclose details about his patient. But he did say, For Albert, living has always been a struggle, but he's fought hard. He's one of the strongest patients I've ever met. From that day on, Angelica began searching for Albert. She didn't plan to disturb him. She just wanted to know if he was okay. A year later, she found him, living in a small town, but he wasn't alone. He was holding the hand of a toddler who was just learning to walk. At that moment, Angelica's face turned ashen. That night, she booked a flight to that town. She saw Albert. He was tanned, thinner, but he seemed softer as a person. Albert was surprised to see her. Long time no see, he said. For the first time, Angelica felt awkward and unsure. Long time no see. Her eyes couldn't help but fall on the child. Did you get married? She asked. Albert chuckled softly. A seamless transition. I'm not that good. He added. I adopted him. He's an orphan. Angelica's heart which had been rising and falling, suddenly relaxed. She let out a slow breath. It felt like she had narrowly escaped something. In that moment, she realized she had been hoping for a reunion with Albert. She liked Albert, but Albert said, I'm never getting married again. Angelica suddenly felt like crying. What had she been doing all these years? Can I still visit you? Visit the child. Albert shook his head. It's best not to. Otherwise, I'll have to move again. It's a hassle. Angelica felt even more sorrow. She suddenly felt very alone. She didn't want to leave. She wanted to buy a house next to Albert and live there. But she knew she couldn't do that. All she could do was say goodbye. Goodbye. She whispered. Albert smiled faintly. Take care of yourself. Let's not meet again. Albert left. A week after Angelica showed up. He took the child and disappeared. His actions were a clear message to Angelica. Don't look for him again. Don't disturb his life. Upon hearing the news. Angelica spent the night drinking. Her stomach hurt. So much that it brought tears to her eyes but she had lost the person who would make her herbal medicine. She gave up on looking for Albert again. She only wished him happiness.